Hello, everybody. Trade show and convention season is upon us. Today, we're going to talk about how I get the most out of conventions and trade shows as a retailer attending these lovely B2B offers. Not that trade show or convention season really stops for us, but this uh, gamma is coming up and that's sort of the beginning of that for us. This is episode three of Game Retail Ramblings. I'm your host, Travis Severance, coming to you live from Millennium Game Studios in seasonally confused Rochester, New York. Happy birthday to my mom today. Without her, I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be listening to me. So quick congrats and celebration for her. Trade shows, conventions, Why do I attend? Why am I going? Why is it important? How come I'm on the road? Do I really enjoy airports that much? We're going to break that all down today. As far as trade shows for the year go, this year I'll be attending Gamma, as I said. I'll be at the ACD Open House. I will be at Gen Con, PAX Unplugged. There's a chance that I make it to Astra and maybe Essen. I have an employee going to Adepticon, and I'll likely send somebody to the Alliance Open House in the fall as well. And part of the reason why I attend trade shows and conventions is just due to the nature of being in the room when product releases. I want to see the reaction, the live organic reaction of fans when they show up at a show, they take a look at what a publisher has to offer, the new hotness, whatever that is. And just being in the environment itself sort of gives me a broader feel for what the actual market says rather than just what's inside of my walls. So it helps me make some some decisions that I wouldn't normally make the benefit of being on the floor for a large convention is I can see what booths are busy I can see what publishers are busy I can see what games are selling I can see what games are not selling so a lot of times during the show whether it's a a trade show or it's a convention I have my phone out and I'm emailing sales reps constantly throughout the time that I'm there because I'm making adjustments to my pre-orders I'm getting a lot of times I'm sending an email in where they don't even have the product in the system yet because it's new and it's on the floor and I get a chance to sort of see it, see it in action, that sort of thing. So instead of going through like a top seven list like I normally do, I'm just going to talk about seven things that that I go through when I when I'm looking to get prepared for for a convention or a trade show. These are things that I do routinely and they're things that hopefully would help other people as well it's it's super super critical that if i'm spending time away from my business and i'm not spending time working on my business because i'm at a trade show and i'm spending the money to go to a trade show and the time away and i'm leaving the business in the hands of the other people that are here for me that i make sure that i do my best to to get my money's worth when i when i do that so the first thing that i try to do when i'm going to tra- attend a trade show or a convention is i want to set goals now Depending on how long the trip is and depending on whether this is the first time or not, those goals are going to vary. Sometimes I write them down. Sometimes it's stuff that I scribble when I'm on the plane, different things that I want to do. It's just a way for me to be able to sort of set the tone for what it is that I'm, why am I going? Am I going just to hang out and play games? Am I going there with a specific business reason? Is there a a publisher that I'm visiting? Because I'm in a consultation capacity, so I need to spend some time with them. So... I need to figure out what the reason is that I'm going and then sort of work on a plan that's going to guide me in the direction that's going to bring me to help meet those goals. So those goals could be all sorts of different things and each person's going to be a little bit different. If it's your first time going to trade show, maybe it's just because you want to get out there and you want to meet some of the publishers or maybe it's your first time at your distributor's open house and you want to get to know your sales rep a little bit better have a drink share a meal that sort of thing it's just better for your professional development to to be out there so that they they can put a face to a name even if you talk on the phone or if you send an email it's a it's a good way to grow your professional network as well number 2 is plan ahead plan ahead has to do with everything that i do aside from setting goals that leads up to me actually getting on the plane or getting in my car and going to the show. The first thing that I want to make sure that I have is plenty of business cards. I'm going to be handing out business cards constantly, whether it's whether it's a retailer, a publisher, a sales rep. Occasionally there's been people from the media that, that I've had to give my information to because they followed up on me with an article or something to that effect. So making sure that I have business cards with me and on me at all times. 
if you don't want to get too exotic or too fancy, although those options are available, Vistaprint does a really, really good job with business cards. You can get a whole bevy of different options as far as that goes. Graphically, they can design things. You can have different thicknesses, rounded corners, so on and so forth. My only recommendation on the business cards is don't get too cute. I've seen people with these giant, elaborate almost postcard sized business cards and those are just obnoxious because they don't fit in my pocket with the rest of the other ones. If you want to get a little thicker business card that's got a little substantialness to it, then then go for it. But if you're if you're gonna do one of these big postcard things, just just don't do it. The other side of it is setting up the meetings that you want to have with the publishers. Going into the Gamma Trade Show, there's a whole list of publishers. There's publishers constantly posting on their Facebook. I think the site map is up at this point, so download their application get on there play around with that a little bit see what the floor looks like part of part of looking at the floor is going to give you an idea of your path through that space there's three days that that we have that we can attend the show floor for that show so you can sort of take your time and meander through the hall or you can sort of prioritize each day day one i want to make sure that i talk to these very specific publishers because they're important to my business or I have some questions or I have some concerns and I want to have a conversation with them about that. The reason you want to start with those is A, you don't want to miss them and B, if there's some follow-up that happens because of the conversation and stuff like that, you want to be able to have a couple of extra days to be able to spend time with them and if you have to follow up with them afterwards about a certain situation, prioritizing the people that you want to see or that you need to see the most start with that in the beginning and then sort of go through some of the exploratory meetings that you're not necessarily prepared for or publishers that you're not familiar with i look at the the slate of publishers that are at the gamma show and there's a wild amount of them that i don't know so i don't know what to really expect on that show floor i know plenty of people that are going to be there but some of the publishers the names alone doesn't really tell me anything about who they are or what their products are. So I, it, as part of my prep, when it comes to a lot of those folks, I'm actually going to look them up and figure out what the deal is. Do you have a game that's relevant or matters to me, or is this somebody that I can just skip? I'm not going to spend time with every single stall that's there. Not every single booth is going to is going to get my time. There's some publishers that I love, but there's no reason for me to necessarily talk to them because I'm at the show and my mindset is sort of acquisition and or taking care of whatever my professional networking obligations are. And that changes based on the show and based on what my goals are. Additionally, figure out when your meals are gonna be. Trying to find out where the closest place to eat in the hall is, the, the, the easiest way to get away for coffee, that sort of thing, that's super important. Knowing where your exits are, knowing where the bathrooms are, that sort of thing. Give, give yourself some familiarity. Last night I printed out, I went on the Louisville website and I printed out a top-down graphic view of the Skywalk for Louisville because I haven't been to Louisville in like five years and when I was there, I was there for a volleyball tournament and I didn't do a lot of adventuring around the, the downtown that they have. Knowing what the Skywalk layout is is going to let me get to different places and what will happen is my inbox will get flooded with a bunch of locations and if i have no idea where those locations are i have no idea how much time i need to be able to get from one place to another so then i have a schedule full of stuff that i don't necessarily know if i can accommodate so from a the standpoint of wanting to be on time always making sure that you know where those meetings are super super critical so one was set goals two is plan ahead number three is network effectively What I mean like that, what I mean about that is this. If you go to a retailer seminar that's being put on by a publisher, praising in big spaces with a lot of people and having tough conversations in smaller groups is always going to be more effective for your professional networking. If you are sitting in a publisher's seminar and they're talking about their product, and even if they open up for discussion, if you choose to use that time to ambush them in a presentation, whatever the result is that you're hoping to get, whatever the changes that you're trying to affect is gonna be not as effective as it is if you get some time, grab one of their business cards, pull them aside, have a follow-up email, that sort of thing, rather than trying to sit sit there and embarrass them in a, in a group full of retailers. So please, if you have something that you disagree with with the publishers, that's not the time to grab a rotten tomato and throw it up at them on stage. Take the time to pull them aside if they have some time and then they'll have a conversation with you. I promise you it'll be more effective for that. The same thing goes when it comes to 
you know, if you run into a retailer and you don't like their business practices for whatever reason, or they're doing this or they're doing that, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to get into an argument with them in the meal line. So with regard to growing your network and, and being effective that way, think about the conversations that you're having. It's natural to have frustrations, concerns, disagreements with the way that people do things. There's a professional way to handle that discourse. Being somebody who's forward with that and able to have that conversation without getting too animated or too emotional about it, I think is super paramount as well. The number of times that I've gone to a show really irritated with a, with a publisher about one of the things that I might have mentioned in episode two, and after having the conversation and finding out the reason why they did whatever the thing was, it makes business sense because the reality of it is publishers, distributors, they're doing the best that they can just like we are. So they're going to take and they're going to make business decisions based on what they think is going to be the best course of action for their business. That doesn't always mean that it's going to align with what my business is, but it also doesn't mean that it's that it's wrong. So I, I would I would give people the grace that you need to in front of the large audiences. And then when you have some time, you can pull them aside. If there's another retailer, you know, that has sort of the same issues, having having another person there to sort of reiterate what you're saying in a, in a good way is 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 great as well. The other side of it, too, is it, it kind of holds them accountable. It's one thing if they're having a conversation and it's one on one. It's another thing if there's there's two retailers there and they're there as well, because it's not just you saying that they said that they were going to do X. It's also that person there that said that they're going to say that they're going to do Y. So give them grace for their past transgressions. If you have issues with them with regard to what they're doing now, pull them aside or, or, or get with them at a different time that isn't in the middle of their presentation on their new product lineup. Follow up. One of the things that sort of gets lost is that's number four is follow up. I go to these shows, I have a great time. I get excited. I'm all jazzed up. I, I you know, my, my professional batteries are recharged. I'm ready to go. I'm coming back and like I've got all these ideas for my employees, these things, this, that, that I'm going to do. And I had these great conversations and then I get back here and I get bogged down to the same day to day that I was in before. And I don't ever take the time to reach out and make those contacts, follow up on the conversations that I had with a publisher or another, you know, potential retailer that I'll add to my retail network as well, which the retail network is super critical. That'll be something that I'll probably talk about in another episode, but making sure that you have people that you know you're going to follow up with whether it's to order their product there have been times when i've sent you know a thank you card or different things like that depending on what was appropriate for the situation the explanation that that's a big time when i'm adding people on either linkedin or facebook as well to make sure that i've that i've sent that friend request when it's appropriate to and i'm not just sending them a random friend request in the dark like we had the meeting we talked to each other about it they know who I am my Facebook page I have two actually the the one that I use professionally is just full of people that I can reach out to that are familiar with me and familiar with my store and the the stuff that we do and a lot of the conversations that I end up having come directly from those conversations so making sure that you keep yourself honest you follow up with the product lines that you want to make sure that you bring in and stay on target as far as going back to step one, your goals, there should be some follow up. If you set goals and your goal was to grow your business in a certain way, bring in a new product line, meet five other retailers, talk to 10 publishers, open up a direct account with a new distributor, those sort of things, follow up is going to keep you accountable on that stuff. So you're going to go through, you're going to look at your list, you're going to figure out who you need to contact with through email, you may need to place a phone call. There may be applications that you need to fill out. Keep your head on that and, and try to get to it as soon as you can. I know a lot of times for me, I prioritize what I'm excited or I'm enthusiastic about and filling out applications is not something that I'll ever be enthusiastic about. My handwriting is trash. Most of the time the forms aren't digital and it takes a while to get all the information that I need to fill that thing out and open up the account. But after that, I've got the account forever and I'm just going to send the orders in and it's going to be part of my process and I get to bring in some new stuff. The staff gets excited about it. They're like, oh, we left for a trade show, but he came back with all this new things and there's there's different conversations that we have or I hand one of the employees a demo copy that I got or whatever 
whatever thing happened to be the most exciting about, I tend to come back and talk to the staff and get them excited about. We start moving in a, in a different direction as far as the store goes, not holistically or fundamentally, but you know, new lines create excitement from customers. They create excitement from employees because it's something that we're carrying that's a little bit different. We can merchandise it in a certain way. We've got a lot more stuff to talk about on social media, that sort of thing, and then kind of move from there. A measure results is number five. So everybody's going to have different goals. They're going to have follow-up to sort of achieve those goals. And then measuring your results is is super important. It's it's really critical for me. I want to see how many new contacts did I make? How many relationships did I strengthen? What did I order from the floor? Did I take advantage of show specials? Did I have good conversations with other retailers? What, whatever it is that's part of my goals, I have to do a follow-up on whatever those goals were that I set 30, 60, 90 days out. Where am I as far as that goes? And the reason why I want to do that and I want to measure my results is how else do I know whether or not it was effective for me to go to the show in the first place? If I don't give myself a, a, a list of items that I have to do while I'm there and then hold myself accountable with follow-up and then measure the results and see how effective I was, how do I know if, if it makes sense for me to go to the next show or maybe I shouldn't go to the next show or something about my goals might have been incorrect or I should have focused somewhere else or I got lost in a conversation with a publisher or a retailer that took two hours away from my time on the floor and it really didn't net much of anything other than you know I got to have a conversation about a disagreement that's not going to change really anything. So how much positive how much forward thinking, how much forward movement am I, am I going to have from taking the time out of my day to day, making sure that the value of me outside of these walls is returned by growing the business in a, in a positive direction. So I need to measure those results and how you measure those things are going to be different. A product line comes in. It's super, super simple. I spent this much money on it. How much did it sell in the first 30 days? How much did it sell in the first 60 days? What did it sell in the first 90 days? Did it allow me some new opportunities for events? Did it allow me new opportunities for customer engagement? Was it something that one of my employees was super, super passionate about and they wanted me to set up a relationship for, so now they're excited because they're at the register and they get to sell this thing as well. So measuring that sort of stuff is a lot easier than it is to figure out, you know, I had a conversation in the lunch line with such and such. We exchanged business cards and at some point we'll have a, conversation about organized play or a demo program or something like that it's hard to measure those those results when it comes to that one interaction because it may be somebody that you just never have another interaction for or it may be somebody that you know allows you the opportunity to run an event in your store once a year that brings in a whole bunch of outside people that you wouldn't normally have some new revenue sources and ends up being somebody that's a professional friend or a a, somebody that you go to when you have different questions about it that's hard to measure from a, a quality standpoint, exactly what you got out of that interaction, but it's, it's somebody that's in your professional network now and they're, they're really important to your day to day and they have somebody that you can go to with questions now. That's invaluable because it saves you a whole bunch of time wasted on speculation, conjecture, whatever the latest retail disappointment is. So those things are a little bit tougher to measure. You can kind of measure them just in emails or, or in interactions and figure out what that looks like afterwards. It's probably something you go back to. It's not easy to quantify. It's sort of like marketing in that, you know, did, did a whole bunch of people come in the door because we put out this really nice TikTok, or was it just because it happened to be crappy weather out and they needed to come in to buy a game and it was the one in front of them, so on and so forth. It's, it's rougher to measure some of those things outside of I ordered a thousand dollars worth of this product in 30 days. I sold two thousand dollars worth of this product. I ordered more, and I continued. To, those ones are easy to do. Number six is hygiene and health. I I can't stress this enough. We're we're all traveling. We're we're going to get outside of our normal local spheres or whatever. So it's really important. Trade shows, conventions. Wash your hands. Seriously, wash your hands. If you're going to eat, you're going to have an interaction. Wash your hands. The number of people that I see, and and a lot of times it's the same people, uh, that come back from conventions regularly and they have, quote, con crud, and it happens routinely, 
So a lot of those things I can control myself. Some of that stuff I can't. But washing my hands is super, super important. I'm not a handshaker. I don't do a lot of hugging. I know that'll surprise some of you that know me. I'm not a big hugger. I'm not a big handshaker. Fist bumper. Business card exchanger. But I don't. I don't come in for a hug normally. And and you know that's as much for your health as it is for my own. So hygiene, health, super important. Other things trade show it's really easy to be the person that stays up until three o'clock at night and then either sleeps in or misses their seven o'clock because they got four hours of sleep and the next day is kind of trash or you spent too much time at the bar the night before or whatever the case may be rest is critical it goes along with you know your own your own personal health so make sure that you're getting some rest hydrate I don't follow that rule. I'm a coffee drinker, so I just figure the amount of water that's in the coffee is enough for me. By day two or day three, that coffee is now turned into a headache. So I need to chug a bottle of water because I'm not following my own advice and hydrating consistently because, I don't know, I just have a, an affliction to water, I guess. The other thing that's really important for me is I try to make sure that at least one of my meals every day is healthy. If I, if I get up in the morning and I'm slamming a pound of bacon with a bagel and a bunch of stuff and then I go to lunch and I've slammed down chicken wings and four liters of soda and then, you know, for dinner it's, it's, a, it's a giant steak with a bunch of, you know, non-kale chips and different things like that and then I wonder why I feel like garbage the next day and then I do that three or four days or I'm grabbing something off a food truck or whatever the case may be. I try to make sure as best I can I get a healthy meal in at least one out of the three typically for me that ends up being the morning because it's the easiest i've got a fresh head about me and i can i can do pretty well for breakfast as far as staying healthy and making sure that i've got granola bars or a protein bar or something like that in my bag as well because getting through a con is tough to do sometimes indoor shows i take vitamin d3 i don't get a lot of sun during that i have cough drops i'm a coffee drinker so gum is also super important if you're going to have really close conversations with people the number of times at trade shows that I have a conversation with somebody and I really want to stop it because I cannot take their breath is significant. So bring some gum if you're a coffee drinker. Bring some gum anyway. Comfortable footwear, super important. You're going to be on your feet a lot. I'm on my feet all the time. And it's amazing how much of a difference a fresh pair of socks makes. Halfway through the day, if it's noon, one o'clock, and I'm like, why am I so irritable right now? A lot of times if I change my socks, it sounds silly, but man, do you feel like it's a whole new world. So think about packing a fresh pair of socks with your, with your, with whatever you're bringing along for your bag or your backpack that's carrying your business cards that you definitely ordered before the show, because when you get there, you're going to want to have business cards because everybody's going to want to be able to contact you. And if you don't have business cards, it's going to suck. Number seven is professionalism. Again, along with all the stuff that I talked about, out there in the retail world, out there in the in the business world, B2B space, you are representing yourself, you're representing your store, you're representing your employees, to a degree you're representing your customers. Think about your attire, think about your appearance, think about how you want to present yourself to the rest of the industry with regard to them taking your business seriously and being sure that that's somebody that they want to continue to have business relationships with and that sort of thing. So. It should go without saying, but non-offensive clothing, super important, making sure that you're well put together, being polite during discourse can go a long way. It's, we should disagree with each other. That that's sort of the nature of the beast when it comes to certain things with our industry, not everybody's aligned and that's okay. There's, you know, 3,800 retail stores, give or take out there. Everybody has a different way of doing things and that's, that's okay. It's not necessarily something that's a personal attack on your way of life or your business because somebody decided that they don't like a board game library or they don't want to have demo tables or they don't want to run organized play in their space. Like everybody has free will to decide how they want to run their business and do their thing. And it's okay that they don't do things exactly the same as you do. And it's probably for the better sometimes. So when it comes to carrying yourself in the industry, being professional and having all those things squared away will go a long way. The first couple of years in the industry, I was a suit and tie guy. And part of the reason why I was a suit and tie guy is I came from finance and there wasn't anybody else in the entire room that was a suit and tie guy. So while it wasn't as comfortable as when I'm walking around in shorts and a t-shirt, 
it certainly got me noticed. I didn't have a problem having a conversation with anybody at that show. It wasn't like, oh gosh, we're not going to talk to this guy. He's way too well put together. That's never going to happen. They're never going to say this guy's too well dressed for me to want to have a conversation with them in a B2B situation it, or have any issues with regard to what your store is, regardless of what your size. So a, a, appearance is important, the way that you carry yourself, your candor, all that politeness. It, it goes a long way and it's something that's noticed and it's something that's talked about as well. The number of times that I've seen somebody get loud with a publisher at a, at a show and I've been like, that's not somebody that I want to really interact with. And for a bonus thing, I'll say have fun. We're in the industry of selling fun. It shouldn't be about being miserable the entire time. You go there, play some games, have a good time, make some new friends, make some new business relations. A lot of a lot of the network that I have, my my best friend Stephen Paul, I met both of those at the at the Gamma Trade Show and the Alliance Open House. These are guys that have been part of my life for the last 14 years without their guidance, mentorship, suggestions, that sort of thing. The business that I have wouldn't be where it is without other people involved in it. So finding retailers that are like-minded, that have similar ideologies, but maybe not the exact same strengths and weaknesses is super good. It, 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 there's, it's some of the most valuable work that you can do is find somebody that's a retailer that has a a similar business mindset, but maybe a different business than what you do and, and be able to get some feedback from them and follow up with them. And a lot of times they're, they can be a sniff test for a new product or something, something that's going on that they look at and notice and go, Oh, is this, is this reality? And sometimes the answer is just yes. And sometimes the answer is I'm not looking at this thing the right way, or I need somebody's outside perspective. Nick Koss is another person that, that I look to for that when it comes to certain things as well. So while you're there, with business cards with clear goals that you've planned ahead and you're ready to network effectively and you do some follow-up and you measure results you take care of your health and hygiene so that when you get back you don't have to spend a week on the couch doing all those things make sure that you're having fun if you're in the game industry and it's not fun it's probably time to get out of the game industry because it's supposed to be fun we're supposed to be giving people a break from their from their day-to-day -day grind come out of their you know the doldrums of whatever it is that the world is unleashing on them outside of these walls and when they come in the walls we should be entertaining them it's the same when we go out there and we experience the rest of the industry we should be entertained if i'm at the show and more often than not i'm angry there's probably a problem i've got some issues or some soul searching that i need to do so with that, I'm going to wrap up today's episode. Next week's episode is going to be all about, about how I evaluate games and what my process is to bring games into the store. So it'll be sort of a high-level view with some nuance to it for how I approach publisher reaching out to me or where, where I look to, to explore those things or what influencers that I, that I seek out or that I listen to. To, to put new games on my radar, how I utilize crowdfunding to sort of bring in things that are, are not as well known and in what ways I use to kind of dive through that. So that'll be next week's episode. We'll also be filming another episode after that because I will be traveling. So next week, next week's actually my birthday. Next week, we'll do that episode and then we'll back to back it and we'll do another episode. And the other episode will be all about how to foster those business relationships that you just made and put that stuff into action so that it's effective for your business when you get back instead of clobbering your employees with 40 new initiatives and all that stuff. How do you take a measured approach now that you've collected all this information, you've learned how to evaluate games, how do I bring that back and I put it, it to work with my, in my business with an effective, in an effective way. So again, until next time, everybody, thanks for watching Game Retail Ramblings.